everybody welcome back to our channel welcome back welcome back i pray that everybody has had a great week so far as you can see we're going to be diving back into our book club and um, before i get started um, if you just happen to stumble across our video welcome 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 i hope something is said or done that would encourage you to hit the subscribe button and join the family if you're one of our faithful followers welcome back everyone so today we're going to be going over um define chapter one and look at some things that we have going on for the book club um as you guys know i do take off the cover for the book club for my book um rather so we are studying the book define who god says you are it is by the kendrick brothers you guys can see here um, i just take off the cover it's just easier for me um so this is my book this is my um, journal for my prayers and then this is our binder that we have for the group um to purchase it is the book club binder it does have um all the books that we're going to be doing this year so you can see define discerning um discerning the voice of god by priscilla shire and then spiritual um gifts and then it also includes um annotating note card so like how to annotate everything is laminated and then it also has a book marker um for just in case you want to take it with you on the go you can use the bookmarker um so what else and there's also other bookmarkers that we have made so as you can see here we have this marker this bookmarker that actually goes with the book so it says defined on it so really really nice so that's the bookmarker for that. And then we have the bookmarker for discerning the voice of God. And then we have this one for spiritual gifts. As you can see here. So really, really, really pretty. So there's three bookmarkers. Uh, that you guys can get in a set or you can individually in a set or with the binder so let's go ahead and jump into chapter one so chapter one is called identity matters and as you guys can see i have already um underlined in the book so that way it doesn't make the video super super long so that you guys we can um go through it real quick we already went through the introduction and highlighted it and color coded it had some notes there all right so let's go over identity matters so it says identity matters i call to god most high to god who fulfills his purpose for me um psalms 57 2. now you guys know i put all our um this is my pin jar I actually i have two let's see if you guys can see this one too so I have two pin jars, but I do um, highlight the scriptures in blue. I do use the mild liner highlighters and Sharpie. And I like these because you could, they're a different two-sided tip. Really, really nice. And Sharpie, you guys, I do love 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 sharpie sharpie pens i also have paper mate that i use i like these to write and i also got some other pens that i really like they write really smooth um these are also paper mate 
so i like these little color i like writing in colors and color coding everything so first things first is i highlight the scripture because that's going to let me know that that is a scripture reference now on page nine of the book some of the things that i highlighted was um, Jesus Christ, the most loving, powerful, and influential person ever to walk the earth. His entire life is a vivid illustration of the priority of identity. At 30 years of age, Jesus arrived in Judea to be baptized by the prophet John. And then I also underlined, at his baptism, Jesus came up to one of the Jordan rivers, the of the Jordan River, and and eyewitnesses heard a voice of thunder, voice thunder out of the heavens, saying, "This is my beloved son, with whom I am well pleased." Matthew three seventeen, and then I put his identity, and then I also have now consider the significance of the affirmation at the genesis of Christ's public ministry. So I circled affirmation in Genesis because I'm going to define those. And this is page nine. So first things first was Jesus Christ, um, the most loving, powerful, and influential person to ever walk the earth. Now for the key, uh-oh guys, where is my key? Oh, one second, guys. Uh oh. Where's the key? Where's the key? Guys, one second. I have misplaced the key for the book. Oh, 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 here it is. All right, so here's the annotating key. Sorry, the camera to be shaking. So I got a new camera stand, kind of, sort of, for a better overlook. So I hope this is better, you guys. Um, so the annotating key. So this is our annotating key. For me, because my desk has a lot of space on it, I like to, um, you know, even though I leave it in my book, I use some washi. And kind of tape it down on my desk while I'm reading and writing. So Jesus Christ, the most loving, powerful um, person ever to have walked the earth. So to me, that, you guys, is a very strong key point. So it's very important to understand. So I'm going to grab... And I'm going to underline that. Jesus, the most, Jesus Christ, the most loving, influential person ever to walk the earth. His entire life is a vivid illustration of the priority of identity. Mm -hmm. 
At 30 years of age, Jesus arrived in Judea to be baptized by the prophet John. At his baptism, Jesus came up out of the Jordan River and eyewitnesses heard a voice thunder out of the heavens saying, um, This is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased, Matthew three seventeen. Um, So this is something to understand that he was 30 years of age when he got baptized. So this is a purple. Let me pull some of these out. So this is purple for me to understand. Now you can, depending on your color code system, it's going to determine what colors you have. You don't have to have the same colors I have, or definitely you don't have to highlight, underline, or anything the same things I do. Okay, so that's for me to understand. And then this was a key scripture, so it is in blue. So I'm going to highlight Matthew 3.17 and I'm going to bracket this. And then right here where I have, this is my beloved son. This is his identity. So this I'm going to write in, um, this is a key point. See, God could have said all types of things, but he I, He gave his identity first. Okay, and the next thing is affirmation in Genesis. So I'm going to define those. So those are going to be in green. I circle it and then I'm going to define it so affirmation means affirmation means the acts actions I'm sorry the action or process of affirming something or be affirmed. I, hope, I don't know if you guys can see that. Okay. And yeah, there we go. It says the act or process of aff affirming something or being affirmed. Emotional support or encouragement. So I'm going to write that here. Now you can write it in pen first. Or you can... Um, Uh, write it um i'm sorry guys lost my train of thought you can write it in pen first or just write it in your color pens if you have color pens i always like to write it first so i'm going to put um i'll put it up here if there's not enough space you guys you just can write it anywhere on your page so i'm going to put number one here and i'm going to write affirmation and then I'm going to put the action or process of affirming something and then I'm going to put emotional support or encouragement and then I can put number two the other word is Genesis now the reason why I circle Genesis because we all know that Genesis means like the origin or beginning of something so um it's just so you know, to help remind you. So I'm going to put beginning. Because if we read it, now consider the significance of this emotional support or encouragement at the beginning of Christ's public ministry. So do you see how that, how that kind of, 
you know, people who don't, you know, it's okay to um, define words or simplify things, uh, especially when you're reading the Bible. It can, you know, you can like be like, oh my God, I don't understand this. Or, you know, what does that word mean? I always define it. Even if I know what the word means, it just, for me, it just helps. And then especially like if you want to, um, you know, pass on your books, to your children, grandchildren, or anything like that, it uh, it will help them. You never know. People, don't be shy to define words. Nothing wrong with that. That is why the dictionary was created. Um, so I'm going to highlight or go over this in green. And guys, this is just my preference on how I, you know, I could just write it in green I don't know. It's just something that I've, I've always done. And then what I'm going to do here, right here, I'm going to put a one over it. And that's just, it shows me that this goes with the definition at the top. So did you guys see how that worked? So I put, now consider the significance of this emotional support or encouragement at the beginning of Christ's public ministry. So it kind of just gives you a better understanding. I hope that makes sense, you guys. So don't be afraid to define things, okay? Now, moving on to page 10, um, it says, um, Identity took uh, precedence over instructions. Interest interestingly, God declared this audio, um, audible blessing of love and acceptance before Jesus had preached one sermon. Called even one disciple, performed his first miracle, or completed his father's will. God wanted everyone present, including his son, to hear exactly who Jesus was and how deeply he was already loved in the eyes of the, his heavenly father. Immediately, the Holy Spirit led Jesus into the wilderness to be tested by Satan for 40 days. Both Matthew 4 and Luke 4 state that two of the three re uh, recorded temptations that Christ encountered were uh, specific attacks aimed at all the things all of all things his identity the temp the the tempter kept repeating if you are the son of god in matthew 4 3 if you are the son of god in verse 6 this was his allurement ex um, inciting jesus to com uh, compromise in order to prove who he was Satan knew that Jesus' integrity and desire to live out his identity was a powerful motivator that would strongly influence his decisions, but Jesus uh, consistently responded with the truth of Scripture rather than his own feelings. Despite intense pressure, he trusted what his heavenly Father had already um, lovingly affirmed. After this experience, Jesus traveled back to his his hometown in Nazareth, walked into a synagogue, and publicly read what the book of Isaiah had prophesied as the job description of the Messiah. Jesus was publicly declaring who he was, acknowledging his calling to preach good news to the poor and to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind to set free the oppressed in Luke chapter 4, verse 18 through 19. Uh, the local citizens did not realize he was their Messiah, so they immediately questioned it. Isn't this Joseph's son in Luke 4, 22? Rather than embrace their long-awaited Savior, they were filled with rage tr and tried to kill him instead. Jesus' first day of ministry ended in attempted murder, but he knew this was the only, the only begin this was only the beginning. So he walked through the midst of the angry crowd, left Nazareth, and went out to fulfill his mission. So on page 10, the things that I underlined was identity took precedence over instruction. So that's very, very important, you guys. When we're doing things and, and things like that, you know, you always have to remember, people remember you based off of the actions that you have, that you do. So if they catch you lying, what do people classify you as? A liar. If people see you stealing, you're a thief. You're a stealer. You know, if you're always rude and have a nasty attitude, then you're this rude person that has a nasty attitude. But if you're, um, 
you know, your identity and the things that people that you do, your actions and things like that, that is what people remind remember you as, you know, a loving person, a quiet person, you know, a helpful person, a person all about, you know, ministry. Um, and that's even in your in your work. If somebody is telling you, oh, go steal that car that they gave you instructions, right? Go steal that car. But you have to remember that your identity is going to be tainted by you still in that car. Does that make sense? Um, so that's very important. Um, then I put God declared this audible blessing of love and acceptance before Jesus had preached one sermon. So that is something to understand. Well, for me. Uh, one sermon, God wanted everyone present, including his son, to hear exactly who Jesus was and how deeply he was already loved in their eyes of the Heavenly Father. So all of that is um, purple for me. And see, this is just saying that God, you know, he has already ordained it. He's already declared it. Um you know, this is his son, but he didn't want the focus to be on that. And you think about on a celebrity status when they have kids, you know, kids don't, they don't, their children don't always want to be in the, the parent's shadow. Oh, this is such and such kid, you know, even though we do that, but you know they have their own identity they so that's why they work so hard to get out of their parents identity here i have declared god declared um i wanted to define declare so declare means openly or formally asserted or announced so you can put god announced this audible blessing and I'm just going to put over here. Um, I'll put declared. And you can put uh, announced. Now again, you guys don't have to... Uh, define words like i do you can just read the book and highlight what sticks out to you so declared so god announced this audible blessing then i have here matthew 4 and um luke 4 and because we're going to be reading this, you guys, you don't have to jump over and read the scripture. But that's something to know that uh, both Matthew 4 and Luke 4 state the three temptations. And then here it says all the attacks um, are aimed at his identity. So that's very important to know. That is like one of the main things that the enemy is going to do. The enemy is wants you to not know who you are. The, the enemy wants you to know, you know, cloud your judgment, you know, keep that clouded mind, you know, as far as who you are in Christ. So that is the enemy's main, main attack. Identity. So that's good, good to know. Uh, or understand because some of us will know it but then when the enemy is attacking us and we start feeling like we don't know who we are in god god doesn't love us you know god's not answering our prayers that's because we don't know who we are truly in christ um this allurement um inciting jesus to compromise in order to prove who he was so all that goes together and that's what the enemy does he wants us to um you know, constantly proving that we are daughters of a heavenly king. We are daughters of Jesus Christ. We are sons and daughters of Jesus Christ. You know, we know who we are. We are, um, we have the same power as God, as Jesus does. You know, we have, you know, inherited these different things. And, you know, the enemy is constantly going to attack your identity because, 
he's wanting you to constantly prove who you are and then some of us throw in the towel and be like you know i don't know then you start doubting and you start you know second guessing things you know and that's what this is about um then it here it says jesus integrity desire to live out his identity was a powerful motivator that would strongly influence his decisions so right there i have um this this is very important your your you should have the desire and the integrity to live out your identity you know, you should want to shout from the mountaintops, you know, that you love God, that you're a Christian, that you, you know, you know, you should be able to show this love, unconditional love, you know, that you have this excitement, this fire you have, you know, to know God and to be a Christian and to walk in his image and different things like that. That should be a motivator for us to do these things, to live out every day. Every day we should live out and ask those questions. What am I doing today that's going to be a reflection of God? How is how is people how are people um around me going to see the Christ in me? Okay? And I'm going to um also do motivator. So you look up integrity. And you guys, you know, I know I had got a, a mess, an email about the time it takes to annotate. You know, annotating is something that can take 10, 15 minutes. It can take, you know, 30 minutes to an hour. It just depends on how much, the one, the book speaks to you. Two, you know, how in-depth you want to go in your reading. How much do you want to slow yourself down and really really dive into what the book is saying you know you can read through the whole book and be like okay i read the chapter skim through the book skim reading you know and be done with it and move on um it just depends on you how how in depth you want your reading and understanding to be and you know books like this where you know they're like i want to say like self-help books to help you learn different things and give you insight you know i don't feel like you shouldn't rush it you should try to pull out as much as you can from the book but again that's my opinion um so integrity means the quality of being honest and having strong moral principles moral uprightness um the state of being whole and undivided um the condition of being unified internal consistency or lack of corruption in electronic data so that's what it says so here i don't have that much space so if you are writing notes um on a sheet of paper you can um write them down or you can grab a sticky note and you can write um page I always write the page number just in case the sticky note falls out. So page 10, and I'm going to put integrity. And I'm going to put the quality of being honest. And having strong moral principles um, being whole. And just in this um, definition, you know, the integrity, the quality of being honest and the moral principles. And it made me think about the 30 life principles that we're also studying. And that is definitely not a fast study, you guys. I can't wait to share some things with you guys with that. But, um, you know, it's just all everything that you study, 
you know, rather in school or a book or anything like that, like take your time. Don't rush it. Get the most out of it. Because when you rush and, you know, you speed read and you can miss some great, great things. Um, Desire means a strong feeling of wanting to have something or wishing for something to happen. So desire. All right. So as you go, so desire was the next definition. A strong feeling of wanting to have something or wishing for something to happen. So a desire and then motivator. Motivator means something that provides a reason or stim a stimulus to do something. A person who promotes interest in or enthusiasm for something. So... Something that provides a reason or stimulus to do something. Okay, so those are my three definitions. Just and then you can put it to the side, and then because uh, if you want to write more on it, you can add to it. Then the next thing was Jesus consistently responded with the truth of Scripture rather than his own feelings. Despite intense pressure, he trusted what his heavenly Father had already lovingly affirmed. And what does affirmed mean? Remember, emotional support or encouragement. So God had already affirmed it. So here, this is why I why it stuck out to me. Jesus always responded in truth of scripture rather than his own feelings. Now, for me, that stuck, stood out to me because I used to always make decisions fast, like fast decisions based off my feelings, not, you know, calming down, really, you know, allowing God to move Um in my in my life you know it was i'm mad okay i need to do something different or you made me mad so i'm gonna not talk to you anymore you know and you know i separate myself you know different things like that so jesus uh, constantly responded with the truth of scripture rather than his own feelings and this i can put a note you know for myself you guys that's why i say when you're reading things, and that's anything, the book club, Bible studies, anything like that, it's nice to follow along with somebody else and what they're getting, their thoughts and stuff like that. But there's things that will speak to you on a personal level, and that is why you have to take the time out to really read it. And that's why I, there will be delays as far as video goes with the book club and any other studies because I want you guys to be able to read it and allow God to speak to you on a personal level. Um, so for me, his own, um, cause, uh, I'm sorry, with the truth of scripture rather than his own feelings, despite the intense pressure, he trusted what his heavenly father had already lovingly affirmed. And so I'm going to put a note here, and this is for, you know, for myself. Um, don't make um don't make decisions um fast based off feelings and then i'm going to put allow god to move And so that's like a personal, you know, one of, for me, because that part spoke out to me on a personal level. You know, people say when you're reading things or you're reading scripture, it may conv um, convict you or bring something back to remembrance. And that's something, you know, 
despite how bad the situation may be or things like that don't make harsh this um decisions so fast and you know in the moment of feeling you know you're feeling angry and all these things because then you can really um um what's the call it you can sometimes mess up your own blessings because you don't want to take the time to work things out talk things out and stuff so because this was my thought you know on the index card on our annotating key my thoughts are in red so i'm going to just go over this in red and again i could just write in red but i don't know i just prefer to do it this way and then again for those who don't like to write in your books you can write notes I like using um, the Cornell method of note taking, so you guys will see that also. All right, so that's what it looks like so far. Awesome, awesome, awesome. All right, so the next thing was um, when God. Uh, read what the book of Isaiah had prophesied um, as the job description for the Messiah. So maybe this is something that somebody did not know that that's what the book of Isaiah had in there. So you can put um, understand, you can put it in purple or um, even pink as a key as a key point. Um, so for me, I'm going to put it in pink. Because say you didn't know that that's what Isaiah was, you know, mentioned. Well, this will be something important for you to understand. Um, and then the next thing was it gave some scriptures as far as um, the different things was. Um, he was acknowledging his calling to preach the good news to the poor and proclaim release of the cap to the captives and recover the sight of the blind set free the oppressed in Luke. So I'm going to highlight those in blue. And then Jesus' first day of ministry ended in attempted murder, but he knew this was only the beginning. So he walked through the midst of the angry crowd, left Nazareth, and went out to fulfill his mission. Now this, again, is a key point. And then I wrote... When we accept our calling and mission, it may not start out great, but we must stand firm on our purpose. And that's with anything, you guys. Are you guys like when you're starting a new job or, you know, a new project or anything like that? You know, it, it it's going to it's going to start off rough, you know, because you got to start from scratch. Right. You, you're starting up. You got to build your clientele. You got to, you know, build, you know, your you know, when you're at a new job, you got to, you know, fulfill different things, climb up the ladder before everything, you know, may fall into place for you to get a promotion. You know, it may not go good. You may, you know, get demoted. You may get written up. You may have different things. People, you know, uh, I'll call it, uh, you know, your, you know, they criticize you, you know, oh, you're not doing this fast enough or you're not doing that good enough or you know, all these different things. So you may have some bumps on the road, especially in business. You know, you may not have all the sales that you're wanting. You may not be making all this money that you may want. But if God ordained it for you, if God has put this blueprint in your mind, if this is something that God has intended for you, those things will come to pass. But you have to be able to be, you know, go through it all standing firm as from the good, the bad and the ugly to receive your reward so that's what i wrote here um when when we accept our calling and mission It may not start out 
great. But we must stand firm on our purpose. You know, God may speak to you and tell you you need to move. You need you need to do something for these other doors to open. But if you're not in tune with God, then it's not you're not gonna know, right? If you're not constantly in communication with him. All right, page. And I think there's a few pages here, you guys. So I'm just going to go over. I'm not going to read everything. I'm just going to read what I highlighted. So that, I mean, underlined. So that way, you know, again, so the videos are not super, super long. I mean, just let me know in the comments below. Does it, do, do you understand it more when I read through it? Or, you know, is just walking it through, is that good enough? Um, so over the next three years, so on page 11, I've underlined Jesus found his entire ministry, um, founded his entire ministry, not on education or on the people he knew, on the miracles he could do, but only on who he was and is. Okay, okay, okay. So continuing on, so I have said that Jesus found his entire ministry not on his education, on the people he knew, or in the miracles he could uh, do, but only on who he was and is. And then I put, he um, pers pers personified his message to, or personalized his message to meet the need of the, of the audience in front of him. He wanted to uh, specify what some of the various elements of his identity meant and for instance i underlined his identity guide guided his actions his identity explained his access his identity clarified his authority and then i also um underlined um his life and ministry demonstrated knowing our god-given identity is a key priority for each of us allowing god to be one to help us discover it and live it out um, is foundational to fulfilling our purpose in life. And then the last thing I underlined on page 11 was the word identity describes who you are in, to in, in totally and real truth about the real you. So some of the things that I'm going to, or how I'm going to um, highlight this, you guys, is just the same thing following um, key things. So this is something to understand for me, you know, I remember again, you guys, I always say, and this video will probably be in two parts, you guys, because I'm going to show you my notes and how I write them out. So this is something to understand. So for me, you know, your education and all these different things, you know, it plays a good, it plays a factor on who you are. But it's not the only, you know, people do not have to have biblical education in order to share God's word. You know, sometimes our experiences, things we go through, all that helps us. And then allowing the Holy Spirit drives us and, you know, teaches us and opens our eyes for explanations and understandings and things like that. So it's important that we understand that. Um and that he personalized his messages depending on who was um, in his audience. And I can relate to that because definitely um, you guys um, know that I'm always struggling within the group as far as, you know, uh, making everything suitable for everybody. And it's, and it's hard, especially when, you know, it's mixed with, you know, you know, new people that's learning how to study the word, seasoned, you know, people that are, you know, seasoned in the word and things like that, like trying to not put too much out there for those who can, you know, manage their time, you know, accordingly and things like that. And then there's some that, you know, who don't work and things like that. So you have more time to do more things. And so it just, you know, it, it that matters, you know, and, and plus when you're, you know, when the pastor is preaching or you go to Bible study, they always try to relate on who's in the audience, who's their congregation um, and things like that. So I definitely understood that. Now, this is a key thing for me, you guys, um, because 
It says his identity guided his actions, explained his access, and clarified his authority. So these were some, some very, very key points for me because if we understand this for ourselves, you know, we can do the same thing. All right, so I just underlined that. All right, and then these, uh, these two key points, these are also very important for us to understand. Okay, and then last on this page is identity. So I'm going to circle that and underline what the definition they, they have put in the book. Okay, so that's page 9 and 10. I mean, 10 and 11. So moving on to page um, 12 and 13. Um, some of the key things that I underlined in this chapter were... Um, Already have a specific God-given identity, whether you know it, want it, or understand it. The concept and the comprehension and functionality. So it's, if we want to know it or not, God's going to reveal it. If we want that calling, you know, that you always hear people say, um, you know, you're running from your calling. You know, you have a calling over yourself. You know, different things, especially if you're... Um, in church, you know, some people will tell you, you know, oh, you have a gift to do this or a gift to do that. But if we don't know that for ourselves, then, you know, we may ignore it. Or if it's not the lifestyle um, that we're wanting, then we are, you know, we're not going to want it. We're going to ignore it and things like that. So I'm going to underline this in purple. So it's our job, you know, to to act on it because some people know that they have a gift, but they don't use it because at that point in time, you know, they're not wanting to accept their calling. Um, in the language, we use the word when to reference time, where to qualify space, who to refer to um, a person's identity. But in the Bible, um, the word who is, re uh, is referenced to indicate identity. So this is just something to understand. So I'll continue to use um, purple. Oops, I was using the wrong purple, guys. And then relationships. Um, in the interaction of our identities that enables... Oh, in relationships, it's the interaction of our identities that enables us to know um, and understand one another. The depth of relationships is greatest when who you are and who they are can freely open up and understand and speak the truth in love. Now, this was something that really, really spoke to me, especially um, if you guys you know, have ever been in relationships and things or a relationship has gone wrong. Um, this is really spoke out to me because, um, you know, if you don't allow a person to be who they are, you know, we're all different. We're not all made the same. We all don't think the same. We all don't react to situations the same. And this is what causes the biggest wedge between, um, uh, people. And, and if you hear people say when you're unequally yoked and things like that, it, that, and this is why, because, we're not on the same page not saying that we can't be friends but you know even with friendships if you think about friendships you know when you don't mesh with other people you know their attitudes or you know how they carry themselves and things like that like all that cause causes friction and then you know friendships fall apart and all these different things or relationships fall apart you know you ever met you know dated somebody and then you know, dating is one thing, but then when you live together, you know, you learn all these other habits that they have. And, and then you're like, oh, no, I can't deal with that. You know, especially if you're like, for example, 
You know, you're going on dates and this person's always nicely dressed and all these things, car is clean. And so you assume that this person is a clean person. Y'all start dating, y'all end up moving in together. And then you go to the house and they're nasty, you know, all these different things. And then what happens? You know, relationship don't work. Um, I always highlight the, the scriptures, again, scripture references. Um, the next thing that I underlined on page 12 is, In God's word, a person's name is not only connected to their physical existence, but ripples outward to encompass their distinctive character and attributes, their individual significance and value, their re um, relational roles and responsibilities, and can also include their authority, action, and accomplishments, reputation, and personal influence. All of these things are that are tied to a name can also be part of your identity as a person. So if you ever hear, you know, um, people say, you know, the the only thing that you that you own is your name, right? If you taint your name, like that goes with you everywhere, and so that's why you know your actions, the things that you do, people, people. Um, you know monitor all of that and you think you have celebrities and things like that they're always put under a microscope right and that's because they're at celebrity status but if you look at it god does us the same way we're celebrities all in our own way to god and he monitors what we do how we act how we do things you know are we uh selfish are we prideful you know are we kind and all these different things all that goes together um, through it all, the conclusions you make become a lens through, I hope you guys can see that, uh, became a lens through which you view yourself, your life, your circumstances, and your relationships. So what has real life taught you about yourself? How deeply have you contemplated these issues on your own identity? Do you really know who you are? And your identity is actually a deep underlining part of your thinking at the same at the same time every day okay so for this part everything is understood and then the questions so you guys know questions i put in orange Let's see i think my orange is over here so the questions what um what has real life taught uh, you about yourself how deeply have you contemplated issues of your own identity? Do you really know who you are? And then the top part is to understand. And again, you guys, and I keep repeating this, and I'll probably do it within, you know, the first few things, a uh, few chapters, but everything I underline may not be something that stuck out to you, and that's definitely okay. Um, your identity is um, is actually a deep underlining part of your thinking all the time, every day. And that's true. It's something that we do and we sometimes don't even realize it. And then I'm going to box this whole thing. We'll just bracket it. Beneath your daily words and ambitions behind your regular thoughts and emotions is a pool of hidden beliefs about your own identity and worth that either clarifies or confuses the choices you make in life. It affects almost every area, including how you think and feel at any given time, the way you approach daily opportunities and react to problems, and how you tend to view God in your uh, present circumstances. So definitely, you guys know, we understand that, you know, our identity, we think about it all the time. You guys ever know, like you get this gut feeling on things is not right. Um, you know, it, we waver in our choices. We may be like, no, this is not right, but then you still want to do it. Or, you know, I want to do this, but you're scared. You know, all that stuff plays a part into your identity, who you are. Um, on page um, 14 and 15, I didn't have a lot that I um, underlined, but the on page 14, their external behavior is actually flowing out internal issues deeply rooted in our hearts. And this was a key thing for me because sometimes you guys know that we always um, we brush a lot of things under the rug or things that happen to us or situations we've gone through. You know, we really don't deal with it, even if it's on a personal level, like we don't deal with it. If we've been heartbroken, we don't want to talk about it. If, you know, 
um, you know, if we've lied, if we've done certain things that, you know, may be embarrassing, some of the actions we have done, some of the relationships we've been in, if stuff is not right, and then we, you know, if you were abused, raped, anything molested, um, you know, whatever, you know, you were out, you know, um, you know, with multiple people, you know, all these different things, you can, and never really dealt with it, you know, these things can tend to, uh, you know, build up and build up and build up. So make sure that's, that's what it thinks. So what we, it says our external behavior is actually following our eternal issues. So you think about kids who, um, fathers were never really around or they didn't have a father figure. So that's something that's deeply rooted in them that, you know, that loneliness or that, you know, wanting that fatherly love. So their actions reflect that, which means they're looking for love in all the wrong places. They're clinging to men, you know, all these different things. So that's what that is. Um, so sure, every one of them needs love. So everyone needs love. They deserve a listening ear, compassionate understanding, accountable relationships, encouraging prayer. Um, but it's important that they discover some key truths about their identity and value that could set them free. The truth, Jesus said, will set you free in John 8, 32. And I put yes, yes, yes. And that's true, you guys. We can't fix everybody's problem. We can't fix um you know we can give advice we can do every you know do certain things but we can't um you know it tells somebody you know their identity is x y and z we can't we don't have that ability um but what we can do is give them love understanding you know hold them accountable and that's something that we've been talking about in our group um when we have our zoom discussions for the book club you know, as sisters in Christ or, you know, brothers in Christ, it is our job to hold each other accountable. So if a, if you hear somebody talking about things that's not aligned with God, it's our job to say, oh, no, you know, that's that's not right. Or if you see um, somebody doing something, they got no business, you know, that's not Christ like you're supposed to um, tell them, look, this ain't Christ like and we should be able to do it in love. Um the question down here says, do you know who you are? So I'm going to underline that in orange. Um, page 16 and 17, I did not highlight anything or underline anything. Um, I did answer the questions and I will show you guys that shortly. And then the end, um, it says, I wrote... Um, this whole thing is really is good um, to love and be loved is a beautiful thing to know your purpose and fulfill uh, fulfill it is a priceless thing but to know um, God and be known and loved by him is better than life itself um, it is life eternal life in John 17 3 so this part I hunt underline in blue because that is a scripture verse and then this whole thing, I'm just going to bracket because this whole thing is really, really good. And then, of course, it has the prayer. And I'm going to show you guys that and take a deeper study. Uh, take it deeper by studying. And it gives you the scriptures, Matthew 16, uh, verses 13 through 17, Mark 9, 7 through 8, and John 5, 31 through 12. And then it also gives you uh, the scripture down here at the bottom. So, you guys, that concludes our highlighting part, underlining part of the book. Of course, I'm not going to read every every page, but I want you guys to get the gift and understanding of how I annotate um, my books. Now, this is just one part. So, I'm going to ex show you guys or kind of explain real quick my process. And I'm going to zoom in. So this is my process. So annotating process. I read the chapter. I underline it in black. So I go through and as I'm reading things that stick out to me, I underline it in black. And then um, three, I write notes. And then four, I work in my prayer journal. And different, of course, you know, the only thing that will change in depending on the type of book that I'm reading, if it's a Bible study book, if it's not, if it doesn't have like prayer things in there, then I may not write in my prayer. I may just write, you know, in my, you know, note section or something. Um, so this is a process for that 
I'm following for um, defined, okay? So, as you guys can see, this video is probably super, super long. Um, so, this may be um, down to um, a two-part video. And there, I'm going to show you guys just a glimpse that what we're going to get into in the next video. So, let me... Um, change this a little bit so this is my binder let me move this out the way so that you guys can see and then we're going to end the video oh before we end remember if you have any sticky notes you're going to put that into your book okay so this was page 10 right here so you just stick it on there you want it at the top, wherever you want it. If you do sticky notes. All right. So the next video, you guys, I'm going to show you the next step, which is me writing notes. So again, you guys, this is our um, book club binder that is available for you to purchase. It comes in a white binder. Um, looks like this. I love it, you guys, because I like to try to keep everything um, that I do in uh, one notebook. It has your annotating um, key here, some suggestions, and then also it's in a bookmark form. So this is defined, and of course it has a calendar in here. And of course, all these videos are after the fact from what we read and discuss in our group and on Zoom. Our Zoom discussions are not shared on YouTube for privacy purpose, purposes of others who are sharing, um, but it is shared in our group. So if you are a part of our Facebook or not a part of our Facebook group, you can get connected with um, the links down below. Okay, so you have your calendar for the month. Well, this is how I set mine up. And then in the group, we also have PDFs that you can print out and have access to, or you can just write it out. So remember, you guys, in the earlier video when we did the introduction, one of the first things that Tasha, our co-founder of the group, um, she is facilitating to find. And the first activity they told us to do was to answer those questions that were on page 17. So I have those here. In the next video, I'll, I'll kind of go over some of those things. But here are my notes for chapter um, one. So this is what you're going to see in the next video okay i'm going to explain it's not highlighted yet i will explain um, and go through that when um in our next video but i wanted to show you guys so these are my notes for chapter one of define and then it tells you to well this is where the chapter notes end and then it says take it deeper so these are those quests those verses that were at the end of the book so definitely guys don't skip over it Take the time to go and um, and study these um, verses. Um, it's really, really important that you don't miss out on anything that God could be speaking to you through these um, different books and um, scriptures that are, you know, shared with us. So this is my taking it deeper. So I will share that with you guys. And then, you know, we're reading Ephesians and Matthew also with each chapter that we're reading. So, as you guys know, in previous videos and other studies, I always do an introduction um, for the book that we're going to be reading to get a better understanding of things. So, this is my Ephesians um, introduction notes, and then I'll continue to share um, like Ephesians chapter 1, all these different things. So, these are my notes, and I will highlight them with you so stay tuned you guys if you guys want to you know want to see how i study how i annotate things like that make sure to give the video a thumbs up remember to subscribe to the channel if you're not already a part of the family and share 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 invite somebody to join it's never too late to join the book club and of course you know the information and things are still there even after we finish um, if you would like to purchase um, a binder you can email us the email is in the comments down below and we will get that out to you guys as soon as possible all these things are printed and um, by me and put together by me laminated and everything so 
um all your support is greatly appreciated so with nothing else you guys i'm going to end part one right here and then we will up um part two will come up next and that will go over um how i write my notes and things like that and kind of explain and walk through that and then finally how to how i am journaling um the prayers and things that are at the end of the chapter so like this part right here so i'll go over how i did the introduction prayer and then i will go and write uh walk through chapter one how i do this part uh, next okay so bye guys